My name is Ken Adams. I am a faculty member in the biology department for the university, as well as the director for our undergraduate research program. Now, I, I think for some students who are going into college, um, you may or may not be familiar with undergraduate research. So we just like to let you know generally what it refers to. And it refers to faculty mentored scholarly work in any major that aims to discover and create new knowledge. Now we have any major here bolded because we at Bridgewater take particular pride in the fact that we have undergraduate researchers doing faculty mentored research uh, in virtually every major, right? Which is fairly unusual. So for example, we have students doing undergraduate research in the natural sciences like biology and chemistry and physics, which is perhaps the more traditional field of research that, that many people will think of. But we have plenty of students in the social sciences also doing research. For example, psychology majors, anthropology majors. We also have many students doing research and creative works in the arts and the humanities. For example, we have English majors and philosophy majors doing undergraduate research. And we have several more as well. Right. So, for example, business majors, early childhood education, there really it doesn't seem to be a major where there's not opportunities for students to engage in faculty mentored undergraduate research. If you were to do so uh, when you come to Bridgewater, it would offer you the opportunity, like I said, to engage in or to receive one on one faculty mentoring. Right. So you would work with a faculty mentor directly and the two of you would design a research project. Uh, you would design how you were going to conduct it. You would be mentored in conducting the research and acquiring the data, how to interpret the data, and also how to present the data. So you would receive that one-on-one -on -one mentoring. We also have grant funding that supports undergraduate research. So for example, each semester, students who do undergraduate research are eligible for uh, semester grants. And these grants can provide up to $300 for supplies that are needed to conduct the project. We also have a very solid uh, summer research program where students receive a $4,500 stipend plus $500 for supplies. Uh, and this enables them to engage in basically a full summer of research, right? So it can be sort of full-time or half-time. We have a few different options that students can choose from, but it's just an opportunity for students to really dig into the deep, into the research in a little bit deeper way than they might be able to when they are you know, have the, the, the uh, additional workload of courses during the normal year. We also have financial support for students to travel to national conferences. And so a common thing that is done in research in the field is after you do a study and you acquire data and you, you discover something new, you'll go to a conference where you'll meet with peers who study in a related field with you and you'll share your research findings. And it's a great way to sort of um, to network with other people, to learn how to present, to interact with people from all over the world, um, oftentimes, to talk about your research interests as well as theirs. And so we provide funding for students to travel to those conferences as well as for, for um, hotel rooms often. Lastly, I'll just point down here, I have highlighted that our program uh, is particularly good. We, in 2019, were awarded the Best Undergraduate Research Program Award by the Council for Undergraduate Research. Uh, and so this was, uh, we were very excited to receive this award and uh, hope to continue doing the great work that we've been doing with it. And so with that said, now perhaps the best part of this talk, uh, we would like to invite Jade Monty, who is uh, graduating in 2022, to share a little bit about her experiences at Bridgewater. And I'm going to stop sharing so you can see, so you can see Jade. Okay, thank you, Dr. Right. Adams. Um, so I have only, um, participated in undergraduate research. I haven't done an internship and I haven't studied abroad. I was hoping to. COVID kind of messed up part of my plans when we got kicked off campus last semester, last year. Um, but I did the full-time summer grant this past summer for undergraduate research and I completed it with my friend Scott and we studied college level math manipulatives and we also designed and 3D printed them with software programs. So I was kind of bummed that it was virtual because we were supposed to use all the technology and the resources on campus. But um, because they fund and we get a project budget, we were able to ship a 3D printer to my house, which was really awesome. And it gets to go into the math lab when we get back to school. So other math majors can use it and learn it as well. 
And like Dr. Adams said, there are conferences after, which I really like. So Scott and I are presenting at the Massachusetts Undergraduate Research Conference this semester. So even after you complete your research, it doesn't stop there. There are so many opportunities to talk about it and engage with others in your field. And then that was my summer research. Right now I'm finishing up my two semester six credit honors thesis. Um, it's an interdisciplinary thesis. So I'm working on it for both majors and I have one mentor from each department. And for that, I'm studying math manipulatives, but in a broader aspect. So I'm focusing in on math education. So it's a little different from my summer research, but still about manipulatives. And it's focused on all learners, student engagement and problem solving. And my favorite part about research, besides studying something in depth that I'm passionate about, is connecting with the faculty, like Dr. Adams mentioned, because I've worked with my math mentor pretty much every semester since I've started college. So we've gotten to know one another. And my education mentor I've worked with since last September. And I pretty much know everybody in the honors department and the undergraduate research department. And as a future educator, those relationships are really important to me because they build connections. So that's what I really love about it. Um, and then my last little note I just wrote was I've had a lot of amazing experiences doing undergraduate research and I hope you guys will get to engage in it as well as well as all the other opportunities that BSU offers because there's a lot to do and it's pretty exciting. So thank you guys. Perfect. Thank you, Jade. So with that said, I am now going to transition to uh, some shared insights from Hannah Dean, who is a current student of ours, who has taken advantage of many of these opportunities so that she can share with you the impact that it's had on, on her. Everyone, um, thank you for that slide. I did not see that last time. Um, but um, as Ken had mentioned, I am heavily involved in a lot of things on campus. And one um, quick thing that I wanted to uh, point out first, I usually have two things that I like to say about high impact practices, is that participating in things like a research project and an internship sound horrifying at first. They are very scary words. And when I was a first year student, I was like, no way, you will not catch me doing an internship. That sounds really scary. But when I did end up starting to participate in these high impact practices, what I learned was that it was really an application of what I was learning in class. I was able to progress my knowledge of what I already know, learn some more things, and then kind of um, ask some more questions. So um, my biggest involvement on campus has definitely been undergraduate research. Um, so when I was a first year student, I joined the research lab that I am in currently, and I knew nothing about biology. I mean, I knew like mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, but I had no idea this research lab is doing behavioral analyses and, and crazy science things. And as a first year student, I had the opportunity to learn those, um, those things. So when I, took upper level classes, I already had a solid basis of um, those things. So that is um, how we need to be looking at these high impact practices as an application of what we're learning in the classroom um, to progress ourselves. The second thing that I like to mention when I talk about um, internships and undergraduate research and study abroad is that they don't have to apply to what you want to do in the future. They can, but they don't have to. It's about the transferable skills that you're going to learn in your time. So for myself, I am in a biology research lab. We work on um, circadian rhythms and behavioral neuroscience. And um, next year, that's what I'm going to go into my PhD in. I'm getting um, going into a PhD in neurobiology. So my, um, my hard lab skills are very transferable. For um, 
my best friend, it's different. She is in an ecology lab. She works with eels. She's not going to work with eels for the rest of her life. She's not going to stand in streams and, and go fishing for the rest of her life. She wants to become a physician's assistant. So for both of us, what's important is that we have skills in a lab setting where she has um, learned how to use um, different procedures and she has learned different technical skills and um, different soft skills. One other thing that's important is the communication of the results that we have. So both of us have presented at um, the conferences that Ken had talked about and having the ability to tell, uh, present your information is very important, especially uh, today where it's important to share our knowledge so that everyone is aware of what we uh, what we know. Um, so those are those are the two things that I, uh, I like to say about um, the high impact practices, that they are not as scary as they seem. They're just an application of what we learn in the classroom um, and that you gain a lot of transferable skills no matter what you pick and if it's related to your field or not. Thank you very much for joining us. It was really, really good seeing you here, hopefully yeah. in person next time. And uh, yes, very much hope to see you on campus soon.